In this video we're going to look at how we can download, install and use Azure Data Studio when we want to use SQL Server. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idudata.com. Now the name Azure Data Studio suggests that you can only use it when using Azure. However, you can also use this lightweight query editor when using SQL Server on-premises as well. Now as of I think it was version 18.7 of SQL Server Management Studio, Azure Data Studio was automatically included. So if you've downloaded SSMS in the last few months, then you've already have Azure Data Studio. If not, you can install SSMS or you can also download and install Azure Data Studio separately. Now all of this is free. So I'm going to download the user installer version of Azure Data Studio. So when should you use Azure Data Studio? When should you use SSMS? Well, you can use Data Studio if you're doing lightweight stuff. So you're mostly editing or executing queries. So you minimal need for wizards. You don't need to do a deep administration or platform related configuration. Another advantage of the Azure Data Studio is that it runs on the Mac operating system and on Linux. Now use SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, if you're doing complex administration or platform configuration or doing security management, for instance. But for lightweight queries, you can use either and therefore it depends what is your preference. So you can see it is now downloaded. So I'll just click on it. And here we go, we have the setup. So I accept the agreement. Now, if you're downloading SSMS, then you'll have a different installer and I've got a different video on SSMS. So I'm going to create a desktop icon. You can do other things as well if you so wish. And now I will just go to install. So it's a very quick install. So I'm just going to let the computer install. Azure Data Studio has now installed, so I'm going to launch it. Right, so here we can see Azure Data Studio, and it says it now has encryption enabled by default for all SQL Server connections. So in other words, it's more secure. So let's click OK. I don't want to read the release note, so I'll click Close. And I'll just close down what I was working on previously. So you can see it retains what I was using in a previous session. So this is the welcome page. We don't actually need the welcome page, but it is handy if you want to create a connection initially. Alternatively, you can click on the connections icon, which opens up this pane, and I can now create a new connection. We've also got Azure and SQL Server big data clusters. If you don't need them, then you can minimize or expand them as you see fit. So I'm going to add a new connection by clicking on this first plus icon, or I can click on create a connection over on this right hand side as well. So here we've got a list of my most recent connections, but I can also create a connection here. So you can select the connection type on Microsoft SQL Server. The server, well, I'm going to connect to my local computer. So I'm going to use either dot or local host. However, you may have a different connection. You should enter it here. You can select what authentication type you want to use, Windows authentication, SQL login, or Azure Active Directory with multi-factor authentication, MFA. If SQL login, then you'll need to enter your username and password as well. So I'll click connect. So here you can see my connection. And within that, we've got database, security, and server objects. If you're used to SSMS, you may be used to a lot more things here. Here, as I say, it's a slimmed down version. And within databases, we have got databases. Within databases, we've got tables, views, synonyms, programmability, external resources, security, and more. Next, I'm going to create a new query. So I'm going to right and click on the database and I can go to new query. You can also create notebooks, which support Python, PySpark, Scala, and R as well as SQL. You can also back up and restore if you've got those features enabled. They are currently in preview. So I'm going to create a new query and here we've got the query window. So first of all, I can select what database I want to be in. Well, let's say I want to be in the master database for this. 
so I can start typing. So select, and you notice the computer is trying to auto-complete, it's trying to help you. So I'm going to connect to sys.objects, and you can see already it is giving me sys.objects and saying it's full name, master.sys.objects. So I'll just press tab to complete. So let's run this by clicking on the run. You can also click on the function key F5. And here we've got our results. Now in this results window, we can also filter if you so wish. So suppose I wanted type S only, I could just click S and click OK. And that will give me solely those types S's. So even though the query has run, I can filter it further. So I can say I want all of those with numbers 16, 17, 18, 19. You can see instantly you get the response. If you right hand click somewhere on the results, you can also save as a comma separated values, Excel, JSON, XML, Markdown, or you can copy with headers or copy the headers alone. I generally copy with headers. And you'll see these options also on the right hand side as well. Now, if you have a look at the top of the screen, you'll notice that in this tab, there is a circle. That indicates that it is not saved. If I wanted to save my query, I can do that by going to File, Save. And that would save it as a .sql, in other words, a text file. You can also have a look at the estimated plan and the actual plan. And for more things, you can go to View and Command Palette which allows you to see other things that you can do in this query window. Now, another thing you can do is to get snippets of code. So let's just type in SQL. And you can see the computer is trying to auto-complete with a snippet. And you can add columns, you can create tables. So if I just click on that, you can instantly see that we have got code for dropping and creating a table. And obviously you've got to fill in the details, but this gives you an outline. So similarly, if I go to create stored procedure, here we've got some code for a stored procedure. Now I can auto-complete some of these items. I don't have to specify table name each time. So what I'll do is I'll go to my very first table name, right and click and say, change all occurrences. So I want this to be called new table. And you can see while I'm typing, all of the other versions are being updated as well. And finally, if we go to our connections and our database, if I expand tables and expand any table, we can see that we have got columns, keys, constraints, triggers, indexes, and statistics. In other words, what we have in SSMS. Similarly, I can write and click on a table and I can select the top 1000 rows. I can edit the data and I can script as a create or as a drop. So here you can see the table being recreated in code if I choose to use this. If I go down to a view, I can also script as an alter as well. So this is Azure Data Studio. You can use this when you are mostly editing or executing queries. And there's one other feature as well. If I just run this query that we've got here, so this was select star from sys.objects. And if I have the type and the count of type as number of type and do a group by type and run this, you can see these are the results that I've got. And I can also change this into a chart. So if I click on chart over here on the right hand side, here is my chart and I can instantly see all of my bars. They don't have the right label at the moment. So if I assume that the label is in the first column, then I'll go back to chart and I will check use first column as row label. And now we can see S, there are 79 S's, IT's 41 and five U's. It enables me to quickly visualize the data that I am getting. So this is how we can download, install and use Azure Data Studio. 
So an alternative to this is SQL Server Management Studio. And in the video that's coming on the screen, you can see how to download, install and use SSMS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not click that like and then the subscribe and the bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. To learn more about SQL, why not have a look at the rest of my videos on this YouTube channel or go to our website, idodata.com. I'm Philip Burton. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.